No, this this is a nomenclature problem because I know those there's the stringy ones and then there's the circle ones. Oh, that's I was what getting you, mixed okay. up. The different kind of sprouts. Hi, Ashley. You look well. It's been a while. Hi, Jay. Yeah, I know it has been a while. I'm gonna say months. I think so. I think it was our last episode came out in March, was it? So it's almost summer. It's. If yeah. you subscribe to the subjective summer belief, it's it's been summer since the Avengers came out. Uh, I tend to go by whatever the calendar says. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. So yeah. It's, yeah, nearly mid June now. What's going on? Uh, well, I wrote a letter to my parents asking them to call me Ashley. This is not the first time you've asked them to call you Ashley. No, no, it is not. But why was this one different? Well, it's getting to a point where they seem to have kind of stagnated that they didn't really. They were just calling me birth name with abandon mm -hmm. and didn't seem to really get how hurtful that was to me. How did you tell them that it was hurtful? Uh, well, I can pull up the letter. No, I mean before the letter. Before the letter? One of the last um, things I remember editing was uh, you getting a postcard in the mail addressed to the wrong name from South Africa. So between then and now, I imagine you would have talked to them on the phone more than a few times. And I, I had been trying to give them space, as it were, to the extent that I was able. Mm. That, was, that was sort of my overall kind of thing. Well, in the past, anyway. W with the idea just that I knew they weren't really on board with things. And I was figuring that... If they were to come around on their own, maybe it would be less confrontational and so on. Okay. And that's different than how you'd been going about it with uh, friends and coworkers where you had a system of initial gentle reminders. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because with friends and coworkers, I certainly like my friends and coworkers, but I felt I could be more firm with them hmm. because with, well, with parents, you only get one set of parents. So... You kind of don't want to screw that up. I'm just curious. What do you think is like the worst case scenario of you saying, I, you know, it really annoys me when you call me that. Could you call me Ashley instead? Like, I, and we probably talked about this before, but did you think that you might be excommunicated over that? No, no, I didn't think I'd be excommunicated over that. Because I'm not sure what you mean by saying when you say you shouldn't screw up your relationship with your parents. I don't know how what you were imagining when you talk about things being screwed up. Uh, well, there's there, there's a middle ground between happiness and excommunication. Mm. I mean, namely, it could be a strained relationship, for example, mm. that maybe we wouldn't talk as often or maybe we wouldn't get along as well on good terms or, or so on. Wasn't it already strained from your side, though, since they were... It was strained in the respect that they seem to just completely ignore my transition, but they were still nice people overall. Mm. As it, so yeah, I, I thought, well, I should write them this letter because they had just kind of stagnated. Things weren't moving along and they they just didn't seem to be going anywhere, I guess. Because it'd, it'd be one thing if they were making progress, even if slowly, because then theoretically you can wait it out or whatever and eventually they would get there, but they were just in a rut or, or whatever. There if, was... uh, if I'm remembering the timeline correctly, you uh, had them over your house 2010, maybe late 2010? And I uh, and said... I had them um, over in 2010 and 2011. Okay. They were at your dining room table at one point, and you said, I'd like you to call me Ashley. And they said, no, we'll call you by the name we gave you. That was your Yes. Dad. That was this past October in 2011. And between then and now, it never came up in conversation? Not on their end, because, of course, they stuck their heads in the sand and pretended like none of this ever existed. Except for the... There were there were some small discussions about plainly obvious things, like you wearing nail polish and dresses. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they did kind of... Uh, well, of course, over Thanksgiving, there was a Spanish Inquisition. Hmm. Yeah, and then also they kind of badgered me a bit over the... December break, so there was, I guess, that too. So, but it didn't come up in normal conversation, though. I guess. So it seems to me like things were strained in some respect, 
they were they were strange. They're definitely strange for me, but they seemed oblivious to how much it was hurting me. And as far as you know, they weren't talking about it with um, any other of their friends or your brother. Well, I, I talk with my brother every now and then, and I think he mentioned that they never brought it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my my parents, for example, when I was visiting them in December, had uh, one of our neighbors over for drinks one evening. Her name is Sarah. She's super nice. And they would call me birth name just right in front of her, mm -hmm. even though I'd come out to her. Mm -hmm. What's I'm, especially odd about that is it's very easy to have a conversation with somebody and not use a name at all just by pointing your face at them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about over the that time period where if it's if you're if you're having guests over or something, one person may be in the kitchen and saying, "Oh, so and so, would you like a glass of wine or something?" Or you know, because people could be could, there could be a distance while one person's fixing dinner or whatever. And I suppose. Anyway, I'm nitpicking, but there's there's ways around it, and maybe I just think about language more minutely than than other people might by saying something like, "Who wants wine?" You know, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So you decided to write a letter. Right, I did, yeah. So, and I had talked about this with my gender therapist as well as, I guess, my psychotherapist. Mm. Just, I talked about them, this with them, like January, February or so, the idea. What I mentioned to them at the time is, is just that I was going to see how things are going to go over the next few months just to give them one last bit of the doubt, I guess. But that if things didn't move anywhere, mm. that I would, I would have to because... Well, part of it is that when I talk with them over the phone, it's it's kind of it's not really clear what's going in one ear and what out the other. As as it might be more clear if you were actually looking at them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as well, my parents have this habit of getting uncomfortable with the subject and then changing the subject. Mm -hmm. So I may have, say, three points I want to cover in my head, but maybe I get through one or maybe the second one. And then they'll be saying things like how about that sports weather? Right, right. Yeah, they, they kind of, I guess, oscillate between not listening and mm. uh, derailing the conversation. So, yeah, I wanted to write them a letter because, I mean, that way, it, well, one of the things I could make sure that I wasn't being a jerk about things because I, I really, I want to try to maintain the relationship I have with them that I didn't want to be confrontational or use loaded language because mm -hmm. okay. that, that really wasn't going to get anywhere. Okay. And you thought that if you were speaking in real time, there's the risk of using loaded language? Yeah, just by accident. Okay. And as well with the letter that I could just make sure everything's in there. I wouldn't be forgetting anything. I mm -hmm. could, of course, proofread and copy edit. I wrote the letter over the course of two weekends and I included things like Here's how I came out to me, as mm -hmm. it were, because my parents have never listened long enough to hear me convey that story. Mm. So even though this is something I've been thinking about since I was like 13 or 14, that wasn't something that maybe they were aware of just because they stopped listening by the time I wanted to tell okay. them about that. And just in, in case there's a, a new listener or a viewer at the moment, as far as you know, they, they've never watched Miss Gender. No, even no. though you've got cousins and uh, and other people who talk to your parents that have seen it and listened, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, my my, I'm I'm certain they've never seen it. Yeah. Hmm. So, in the letter, I talked about uh, how I came out to me, or a couple of paragraphs about that. And the letter itself is like uh, one and a half pages, in all. I noticed at the top of the letter, you actually specifically stated, "I would like you to read this all the way through." Yeah. I thought that yeah. was actually a nice touch. You thought, oh, go good. Yeah. Yeah, because intros are always hard, and that kind of worked out mm. pretty well. Oh, I can I can give a shout-out to my friend Erin. I think it may have been her idea. Yeah, all right. To, to include some of that, yeah. Cheers, Erin. Yeah, cheers to Erin. Oh, here's, okay. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah. Yeah, she's smart uh, and a good friend. So, yeah, so I talked about coming out to myself. I mean, sort of the general stuff about what we talked about on our first show, except that it was, mm -hmm. you know, four or five paragraphs mm -hmm. rather than 40 minutes or whatever it was. I, I also talked about how things had felt before tr my transition, like how puberty was disorienting and mm. 
like even less fun than puberty is for cisgender people. I don't think you used the word secret, but you definitely explained that you had internal thoughts that you weren't sharing with anybody for years and years and years and years and years. It wasn't, I, I didn't use the word secret, but it was just that I hadn't figured it out yet. Mm. So, I mean, I wanted, I, I had to be really sure and I had to accept it myself before I could do anything. Okay. That's fair. So, and then I go over how, how I selected my name, Ashley. Mm. And I talked about my birth name, which mentioned to them that even though it's it can be used for either gender it's a name that is more commonly a man's name than mm -hmm. a woman's name which is the reason why or one of the reasons why i picked ashley mm. and then i went up to talk about how just some of the examples like what if it's you mentioned like about the the postcards they sent me mm. on their trip to south africa or uh they also went on a trip uh to the cayman islands in april for cool. their 40th wedding anniversary right. to, to check on their uh, offshore funds well i i, I wouldn't know <laughs> i suppose but but the, they sent me a postcard from that and it too was addressed to mm -hmm. mr birth name right, last right. name well because they're still operating under the doctrine of we're going to call you by the name we gave you i mean i, I mentioned some about how i received those postcards and they had really pretty pictures but that once i saw they were just to whom they were addressed i i i couldn't bring myself to read them mm -hmm. Because it, it felt like I was getting someone else's mail. Mm, okay. And I mentioned to them about how when they came to visit me in October, that I had um, a barbecue over the Saturday when they were here. And I invited some friends over and I thought, oh, this would be a good kind of fun thing. And but my parents would call me my birth name and the wrong pronouns. Mm -hmm. Even in front of some of my friends who had only known me as Ashley. Right. So they, they yeah, had I think we talked about that. It's awful. So, so then in the letter, um, I went on to say that uh, all of my friends and colleagues call me Ashley and that I, I would like them to call me Ashley as well. Mm -hmm. And not to beat a dead horse, but this is just to make sure the, the second time you've asked for that with, with many, many months in between. Yeah. With the yeah. hope that they would reconsider your initial request after having dismissed it out of hand the first right. time. Right. The, the, the second explicit time, I guess you could say, because I've, my answer to the phone is, hello, this is Ashley, and I, my emails are sent from an address that right. says Ashley in them, and I sign my emails Ashley, and it wasn't like they were unaware right. of this. Okay. And I may have mentioned on one of the earlier shows about how it, I had noticed with my dad that he seemed to be calling me by a childhood nickname more often. Uh, I don't think we covered that on the show, but okay. I didn't yeah. hear about that. When I was a baby, my parents gave me the nickname of Snooks Pooks. Why not? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I mean, to be sure, it's, it's just nonsense words. And, you know, when you're five months old, why not? Sure. I think my parents called me Bam Bam when I was two or three because I broke everything that I picked up. That is so adorable. <laughs> I suppose. Sounds pretty expensive, but yeah, it was cute. What was your sister called? Did you have a nickname? I don't know. She might have. Pebbles? No, they were the, that would have been the neighbor kid. Okay, right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so my my parents would would call me Snooks Box as a baby, and and every and every now and then they would still call me Snooks Box, sure. uh, just as kind of a jovial nickname thing. So, and I I don't mind. It's you know it's fine. Yeah, and if it had been years since the last time one of them called you that, and all of a sudden during this transition time they started calling you that, that does seem. Uh, obvious that they're well I wouldn't say it would be years it's probably it was it was more a term of affection and so it would be it was often when we were it's a special occasion e name each other okay. I don't know about a special occasion mm. name but like when my dad was in a particularly good mood or something like that huh. okay so it was probably every few months okay but then what I noticed over the, when I was talking with my parents over the phone is that they would seem to be calling me Snooks Pooks more often, yeah. which was actually, I mean, fine with me because it's, it's not birth name, so mm. <laughs> that's a start. Okay. And there's nothing manly about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I had a bonus. Yeah. All that is to say that in, uh, in my letter, I also have a little couple sentences about how, I mean, I, that I mentioned to my parents, I don't mind when you call me Snooks Fox, but those times when you don't call me Snooks Fox, I would like you to call me Ashley. Mm -hmm and to use female pronouns for me. Right. So that, that was my letter, and I, and I sent it on 
you know, real paper and I use uh, a real stamp. Yes, real stamps and and uh, Dido typeface at nine point two po points. That seems pretty small, but I'm not familiar with that typeface very much. Are you familiar with uh, Bod Bodoni? I don't know if that's. I, I mean, I've seen I've seen both of those words in lists of fonts, but okay, I've never yeah. studied them. It's it's kind of artsy looking actually, and it's not a typeface I would have chosen okay. normally. Okay. But and I just stumbled upon it and it happened to work. So. Okay. So I had sent them this letter. And I signed it with my purple pen. Yeah, side note, if you want a purple pen, this one is from Pentel. And it's it actually it's pretty nice. Okay. It's 0.7 millimeters and it's a yeah, it's got good ink and stuff. So yeah, sent them a letter. I sent it on a Wednesday and I dropped it off right at the post office mm -hmm. to go out that day. It wouldn't be like in my mailbox sitting for a day or mm -hmm. something. I wasn't sure how long the mail would take between Dallas and Charlotte. But I was guessing they might receive it maybe Saturday, maybe Monday. Okay. And then it calling me about it on Sunday. So evidently they received it on Saturday. Okay. When my parents called, I I I noticed that it was both of them on the phone. Oh. And that's rare? It used to be very common for them to both be on the phone at the same time. Yeah. Because I can chat with both of them that way, mm -hmm. you know. And it was just their landline, so one would be in one room and one would be in the other room. But in the last Six or eight months or so, it's it kind of transitioned, moved over to them just calling me one at a time. Okay. Which is fine, I guess. But but so when they called me, and it was both of them on the phone, I thought, oh, this is unusual. And I mm. thought, ah, they probably received the letter. Yeah. You didn't send two copies addressed to each of them, did you? Because I think you actually <laughs> talked about considering that. Right, right. I mean, that was kind of a tough part just in that, I mean, as... as if for, if for any new listeners, I had once sent my parents a letter about some stuff, and mm. my mom received it and did not share it with my dad. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I addressed it to both of them and just sent one copy because I, I couldn't rule out that maybe one would read it or something, but at the same time, I I, I really couldn't send two letters. Sure. That'd be, yeah. Yeah, so they called, and they first chatted about just normal things, how are things going, whatever. That must have been really heart-pounding. Kind of. I mean, it's, it's... I'd like to get the hard stuff out of the way. Yeah. And it was kind of the elephant in the room, although... I can't deal with those. Yeah. Although I'm not sure they knew that I knew it was the elephant in the room. Because my clue was that it was both them on the line, right. but I'm not sure they realized that would tip things off. And then eventually they do say, um, oh, and we did receive your letter. Um, so my dad says, um, your point of view comes across very well, but I don't think it accounts for our point of view. Their point of view of your gender identity? Yeah, and, and my mom chimes in to say, I see you as our son, and we've known you as our son for years. Mm -hmm. And my mom goes on to say, you like to race your car, and you play with trucks as a little boy, and, you know, all this kind of... Incidental essentialism yeah. nonsense. And so I actually had one in my back pocket for this because I said, and on the other hand, I also rather like ice skating and I enjoy baking, which are mm. not typically masculine things, I suppose. And my mom says, well, men can bake too. Uh -huh. And I said, yes, exactly. And, and there are women who go auto crossing with me that just because someone's one gender or another doesn't determine their hobbies or mm -hmm. people can you know, do whatever they want. But that seemed to kind of go over their head, I guess. Okay. You didn't, you didn't press the point after she disagreed a uh, second time? By this point, my heart was pounding pretty well, so it was kind of hard to think. Yeah. So, I, no, I did not press the point. <laughs> but I, I did say to them, um, I, said, I said to them, well, it, it hurts me when you call me birth name these days. Because I, I, I mean, that was something I mentioned in the letter, mm -hmm. but I also wanted to just get that out there, get their reaction. And my dad says, well, it hurts us when you call yourself Ashley. Hopefully you asked why. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. I said, is that something you could talk more about? I yeah. would like to learn more about why you feel hurt. And my mom said, well, you just, you didn't seem to really 
consider our views or take into account how we would feel before you, as she put it, went through with this. Re uh, s s stop here for a second and remind me, after you came out to yourself, right, you came yeah. out to a few close friends. Right, including you. Myself included. And then your parents were like the very next people, weren't they? I, I came out to me in the spring of 2010. Mm -hmm. And I started coming out to friends that summer, like June, July. Mm -hmm. And kind of gradually came out to a few more in August, a few more in September. Okay. And I came out to my parents in uh, over Thanksgiving of 2010. And when did you start the hormone therapy and the gender therapy oh, HRT? discussions? Yeah. Yeah, I started HRT right about that same time. It was the end of November 2010. Okay. So, in some respect, you you certainly did consider their feelings before you quote-unquote went through with it. Coming out to yourself is probably the most important step, but I think from your parents' perspective, starting hormone therapy is the beginning of it. I guess. Or wearing clothes of my gender. Okay. Or makeup or whatever. Right. Of course, but the disconnect is that I can't not be trans just because they don't like it. Right. That's not how trans works. So what did you say after your mother said that it uh, hurt their feelings that you didn't, or something about you not considering their feelings before you went right. through it? Right. Yeah. Well, at that point, I was kind of stumped because, I mean, how do you, how do you go from there, I, mean, I if, guess? If, if I was in that conversation and I had my wits about me, which uh, is unlikely, I might right. have said something like... Um, well, how would you envision that occurring, me considering your feelings more than I already did? I, th I think, I mean, now that you've jogged my memory, I think I did say something along the lines of, well, if, if there were different ways in which I could have come out to you or different ways I could have gone about my transition, you mm -hmm. know, I'd like to hear about that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think that's what she was saying. No, it wasn't. Yeah. She was probably me saying, being, she was probably... Me being trans is, is immutable. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, but I don't think that they know that. So I'm just trying to translate right. in my own head what they were what they were actually saying. What they were actually saying probably was, you should have talked to us about this before you came out to yourself. Now I'm translating for you a little bit. Um, right. So that we could have talked you out of it. I mean, Is, that, that could have been what they were thinking, maybe. yeah. Maybe. But knowing their reaction now and knowing how I kind of thought they would react mm -hmm. this way over over the years when I had thought about whether I was trans. If if I had mentioned that to them, I'm I'm certain they would have said, Oh, don't do that. That that would yeah. be You certainly considered their feelings many times over over a long period of time. You just didn't talk to them about it until you'd already decided. Right. Yeah. I mean this is a conversation I had with my mom, uh I think it was in December of twenty ten, where she said, Well you really sprung this on us, birth name. Mm -hmm. And I said well, in my defense, I couldn't really come out to you part way. Hmm. And I think she said something like, oh, yeah, I could see that. I think some of this is just their mental process as as their brains are applying friction to the idea that they have a daughter. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Oh, right. So my dad chimes in, and this was actually kind of nice-ish. It was, it was as if he had sensed some of the tension and was trying to hmm. say something friendly or hmm. maybe that's just maybe I'm just projecting but so my dad says uh, I try to call you snooks books whenever possible nowadays which was something I had a hunch about since he seemed to be doing that much more often yeah. and I said that uh, well I, I do appreciate that as, as a step but when you don't call, but those times when you don't call me snooks books I would like it if you would call me Ashley and my dad says well, we don't see it that way. And and my mom, whether being diplomatic or otherwise, she chimes in to say, yeah, we may have to agree to disagree about that. Oh, dear. What does that even mean? <laughs> that, that, those are both ways of saying, um, we, we're going to call you by the name that we gave you. Yeah. Wow. I know. So did so, you did you guys consider the idea that they call you Snooks Books 100% of the time instead? I mean, I, I'm I'm okay with Snooks Books and they don't mind calling me that. But the thing is that 
It's a fairly, uh, it's a term of uh, endearment or, mm -hmm. you know, playfulness. And so it's the kind of thing where if we were at a restaurant, my parents probably would not call me Snooks Books. Sure. Or if they were sending me a letter in the mail, they would not address it to Mrs. Snooks Books. So I suppose. at the least in those cases, they would probably fall back on, yeah, yeah calling me by my birth name. So it, I mean, it, it does help when they call me that because it's kind of a middle ground, I guess, as it were. But it's it's not a it's not a long term solution. What else did you guys talk about? As as one might expect, my my parents did indeed try to change the subject at this point mm. because they were they were tired of talking about this. So my I think my mom or my dad said something like, "So what else been, has been going on this week? How right. how have things been going? Or whatever." So I, I, I chatted with them a bit about, well, my water heater broke and mm. I had the uh, Dallas Camera Club and so on. And I did also mention, and this is uh, news for the show, I guess, uh, I also filed my petition for name change, okay. which is the first step in the name change process. Mm. And I sort of gave them the rough a sentence or two about how long it takes and so on. I mean, my 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 birth name is named after my mom's dad, my birth middle name is named after my dad's dad. Mm -hmm. As far as the name change, I, I did also mention them that I can recognize the the heritage and the tradition involved in my name. And, and so as part of the name change process, I selected Catherine as my middle name in honor of uh, Granny, my mom's mom. Okay. Because her name, her, she went by Kate, but, and it kind of continues the family tradition in its own way. So my dad says, uh, I think she would be most displeased. Granny? Yes. Because hmm. she's since passed away. So, hmm. so yeah, it would seem that my olive branch was defeated. With haughty language, indeed. Yes. Although my, that my dad sometimes likes to do that. Hmm. I mean, hmm. realizing that it was kind of... <sighs> That it was kind of tense again. I I I mentioned, well, I real I realized that it can be difficult to to change and, and to get used to this, because I I'm just trying to acknowledge that I realize that they won't get it right right away, and that it's kind of a it, it is it's a process. Mm -hmm. And my dad says, it's more than difficult. It's painful. I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Did you ask why? No. No, I could tell my dad was pretty pissed off, I guess. Do you know why? The painful part? Uh-huh. Probably because this was the... I mean, the name change thing was probably something where... For someone who knows other trans people or, or who has read about trans people, it's probably not a great surprise that many change their name mm -hmm. <clears throat> if they don't keep their birth name. But, um... And with my dad... Probably in the back of his mind, he saw that as a possibility, but I guess it, it kind of got real for him when I mentioned, mm. hey, I've, I'm not only going to change my name officially, but I've started the process of the paperwork for okay. it. So I guess it, it probably just got real for them, I guess. As a, just as sort of a side thing, uh, one of the things I did mention in the letter to my parents was that I would start uh, gently correcting them if they call me by my birthday. Oh, name. okay. Yeah. What does a gentle correction sound like? What does a gentle correction sound like? You know, like so, hey, George, which is not your birth name. Hey, right. George, do you want some wine too? Uh, no, please call me Ashley. And yes, I'd love some wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's probably it. Yeah. Okay. So that was in the letter, which I'm glad I had in there just so they mm. they really knew that I, I would be doing that. And so to get back to the call, my dad said about the, the painful thing and... When my dad and I talk on the phone, it, quite often toward the end of the call, he'll say, well, I hope you have a good week ahead. And I'll say something like, yeah, I hope you do as well. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, talk to you later. Goodbye. And then, so my, my dad says, well, I hope you have a good week ahead, birth name. Kind of <laughs> exasperatedly. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I really wish you wouldn't call me that. And now... In, in my dad's defense, he could be used to the pitter-patter of 
past phone calls in which he says that, I says the thing, and then that's the end right. of the call. I think you just mean patter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I just like words that rhyme, though. Well, wait, that's alliteration. Those don't rhyme. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, it may just be my dad was used to the pattern of the, of the call. But, okay. Uh, so I say, I, I really wish you wouldn't call me that. And my dad says, okay, goodbye. Yeah. So it could be the, it, I mean, it could be the muscle memory of him used to, him being used to that after he says the, whatever, then there's like three seconds and then that's the end of the call. Sure, sure. Or it could be that he was just really like steamed. And you know, didn't want yeah. to talk to me anymore. <laughs> hmm. No, I'm sure. So, I'm sure it was on his mind. So yeah, that was my call with my parents, and um, it was just really rough. It was. I mean, I cried afterward. It, sure. It just. It kind of destroyed me, actually. But. So how do you think things are going to go forward from here? Well, I'm going to be correcting them every time that they call me by my birth name or use mm -hmm. the wrong pronouns for me right and i'm gonna try to be nice about it as as one could be like in the example we had just you know a minute ago is that the extent of the plan or is there a phase after that that you're anticipating essentially sort of the overall plan is to start applying pressure to them more so and more so until they're able to understand how much this hurts me mm. And it's just a matter of how many gradations I can make out of that. Okay. Because, of course, the the absolute end of the line would be cutting off communication with them entirely, which I want to avoid. Yeah. That would be my absolute answer. So. There's also the slightly impractical option of getting them to not use a name when in conversation with you. Yeah, but that would, that would require them being compassionate about me being trans, and they are not. They're not going to put effort hmm. to this. I mean, unf unfortunately. Yeah, at least not this week. Yeah, at least not this week. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely true. I think one thing that could be a next step, but not the, the final whatever step, maybe maybe that I stop visiting them, that perhaps I may still talk to them over the phone, but hmm. not visit them. I mean, it's not inevitable. I don't want to yeah. think that because sure. maybe they will come around. So there's the length of time that you know somebody. And mm -hmm. there's the length of time that it takes them to get used to your new name. Do you think that those things are directly proportional? They probably are related. I don't know if they're directly proportional. Mm. For example, there, there's some of my friends who've known me equal amounts of time mm -hmm. because I met them at the same party or whatever. Right, right. But yet one of them has gotten used to it more quickly than the other. So some of it may be if someone practices on their own or mm. if they are really concentrating or but it probably is a contributing factor that someone who has known me for 34 years, yeah. that they're, they're used to the name that I used to go by. My parents are actually visiting me in about six weeks from now. Oh, okay. Over the weekend. And normally they come to visit in the fall rather than over the summer. So... And they got other stuff going on in the fall. Yeah. They couldn't I think, move on. I think they just started realizing that for all I know, maybe they want to nip this in the bud or some stupid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. But so, I mean, when my parents visit, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure. I'm trying to figure out if I would say take them out to dinner at some place because mm -hmm. that would often be a very kind of parents visiting kind of thing to do. But I, mean, I don't know if they would out me as, as soon as like if the if the waiter comes with a glass of such and such wine, and I can see my dad saying. Oh, that 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 glass is for him. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, you should. Cook. I mean, I'll correct him, of course, but right, right, right. God, this is mortifying when, especially when the waiter or 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 the server is like, "What? Well, well, what can I get for you, ma'am?" And mm -hmm. you know, like I'm totally doing great, and then they just rain all over my gender parade. Yeah, so anyway, they're coming to visit in like six weeks or whatever, okay. and I'm going to visit them in over Thanksgiving and then probably also in December. I I definitely don't want to cut off visits before those points because in Thanksgiving, for example, we would see like uncles and aunts and uncle and cousins. Hmm. 
And so there, there would be some social pressure there because they call me by the right name. Maybe the combination of them calling me by the right name and, and me correcting them might have some effect or whatever. Yeah, maybe. I hope so. Yeah. I hope I hope it doesn't even take that long. I hope you guys figure something out in the next two yeah. to four weeks. I, I don't, I'm not optimistic that they'll have come around by by the new year. But I mean, but maybe there might be some progress or something. Yeah. Did you want to talk about what it, it is the like change? to change your name? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I, I filed what's called a petition for name change, which is just like a piece of paper that you get notarized and you pay a filing fee. Hmm. And it says stuff like, this is my given name. I would like to change this name. Here's my address and social security number. It's Are there rules on it about which parts of your name you can't change or no. like you can't go from three names to you can't call yourself S Superman, stuff like that? No. Okay. So, yeah, there, there aren't restrictions on, on that kind of thing. Okay. Part of the other bits on the process is that, at least in Texas, and this may also apply to other states, I had to get my fingerprints taken mm -hmm. because the state wants to ensure that people aren't changing their names to avoid prosecution for whatever. Oh. Huh. Right. That's so I had to aliens. get my fingerprints taken, and then I had to mail those down to like the Texas Public Safety Department in Austin where they run the prints and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So that takes four to five weeks to do that. So uh, they've assigned me a court, and they've assigned me a case number. Okay. And I have to, starting around the week four or so, I have to call the courthouse to see if the results have come back from okay. my fingerprints. They don't call me. So since you have to call on week four, and if they haven't come back, I call on week five, and then mm. until whenever. Then, assuming those go through, which should be fine, then I turn in an, an order for name change, which is sort of like the petition, only it's slightly different. Slightly more forceful. I guess, well, <laughs> the order is written the way that um, it's what the judge signs. It sort of says, okay. the honorable so-and-so recognizes right, that right. so-and-so is now so-and-so, hmm. whatever. So basically, you, you turn that in, which then the, the judge looks over, and then if everything is hunky dory then a week or two after that then you appear before the judge and he or she hopefully goes through and changes your name okay they probably ask you three or four times if you're sure there may be some of that i mean i've, I've heard there are some brief questions or whatever yeah. or, or can be brief questions and this is all at the state level does it then bubble up to a federal level where you can get a different social security card and things Right. So um, as one minor thing, there's, as part of seeing the judge, I mean, normally it just goes right through. Mm -hmm. But I have heard cases every now and then, if you have a transphobic judge, they may deny the petition. For, for that reason, in part, I, I'm, I'm not going to be counting my name changes until they hatch. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. So assuming the judge signs it, then... You have to apply for a certified order of name change, which I'm guessing is just like some certificate thing. Mm. And then that takes, I don't know, a week or two. Okay. And then you can use that. You can take that to the DMV and get a new driver's license. Mm -hmm. Or more accurately, you take it to a DMV and they put it in the computer. And then six weeks later, they mail you a new driver's license. Although I believe they do give you a new paper driver's license that day. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. Right. Although I don't know if I can buy beer with a paper driver's license. <laughs> I mean, it's probably legal to do so. Are you, are you getting clerk, carded not, now? Wait, what? Are you getting carded now? When's the last time you got carded? Like three weeks ago. Really? I, uh, oh, I, mean, I guess I'm flattered. <laughs> sure. But it is like getting carded. That was one of the, one of the straws that broke Ashley's back. Because when, when I hear the clerk at the checkout say, may I see your ID for the beer, ma'am? Mm -hmm. I, I get this feeling of sort of like sadness that overcomes me because I know that within the next 15 seconds or so, I'm going to be outed and there's nothing I can do about it. Because they're going to look at the, the M or F on the card? Well, more accurately, they're going to see the giant picture of someone who vaguely kind of sort of resembles me, oh. but looks much more masculine than oh, okay. the person who's buying beer. Well, we don't have a lot of time left, but it wouldn't be misgender if you didn't want to teach me something ladylike. Yeah, sure. So I got. Do you want to get, get two jobbies? <laughs> I would love to see jobby number one. Okay, jobby number one. 
Okay, so this one, this one is is our returning champion. Do you remember this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this so is uh, instance number three, I think. Probably, yeah, because it's a really good product. All right, say what it is for our listeners. Okay, so this is Two Faced Shadow Insurance. Mm. So it's the the company is Two Faced, which is T O O Faced, and then the product name is Shadow Insurance. And this is an eyeshadow primer. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing your makeup, you, you put some of this on uh, your, your eyelids, and then it helps ensure that your eyeshadow stays truer longer throughout sure. the day, and as well that it, it doesn't tend to fall into the creases in your yeah. eye and form like stripes, which can be annoying. This is a good product. I've, this is probably the third little tube I bought. But one thing I've discovered is that uh, I mean, typically, typically what I do when I get out of the shower is... I'll dry my hair, and then oftentimes I'll flat iron it. But then, okay, so then I'll get into doing my makeup stuff. I'll apply the shadow insurance, and I used to then, okay, maybe a few seconds later or whatever, start applying my eyeshadow. But one day, just because I was, like, out of sorts, I applied my shadow insurance, and then I went to, because I don't have clothes on at this point, and then I went to put my bra on my top and and then I went to do my eyeshadow and it actually my eyeshadow lasted a lot better that day huh. because just that the the shadow insurance had more time to kind of settle in and dry so that when you're applying your eyeshadow it's um it's got a better surface okay. to work with roughly like leaving your conditioner in your hair for three minutes after yeah it's, I mean yeah sure sure totally like that so it's not something where it needs to be five minutes or anything, but mm -hmm. even just 60 seconds or so can really help just kind of let it uh, settle in there. Super. So, yeah. Okay, so second toffee? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You'll. Pr I'm, I'm kind of curious if you'll be able to guess what this is, probably. A tennis racket. No. Okay. Okay. How many more guesses do I get? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't shown it to you yet, Jay. No, well, Come all on. right, fair enough. Okay, so here we go. This guy. What this is? Mm. You, do you want a clue? Sure. Okay, so this this is goes into an appliance and it slides into a little slot. Well, it looks a little bit like a lint catcher for a dryer. Yep, that's what it is. Oh, yep. oh okay. Yeah. That's so clean that I almost didn't recognize it. <laughs> uh, do you not clean your lint catcher? Yeah, I, I clean it before I, I dry things, but not as meticulously as you cleaned that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay anyway okay so yeah lint catcher so this is sort of just a minor tip and this kind of goes within the, the whole ethos of when you have your nails painted one thing you want to try to avoid is using your nails as tools mm -hmm. because that can well it can scuff them the tips and, and as well it can just weaken the structure of your nails yeah so one of the things i noticed is that okay i got this lint catcher guy and then when I would slide it out, and I would have lint on it, I would, you know, run my hand over it to get, get the lint off. Sure. But I, I discovered that it's, it's, when you're just rubbing your hand over it, it's quite easy to catch the tips of your nails against the screen. Because it's a mesh thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so that would kind of give me some premature tip wear. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, this is kind of not the first most worst thing for your nails, but... Heck, if you're trying to keep your nails in good shape, it probably can hurt. So what I what I realized is that if you just curl your hand up like this and then sort of rub um, across the jobby with sort of your, whatever the, the knuckles knuckle? are, yeah, yeah. just above your, your nails. Mm. And of course, if this was like the bare screen, it could be kind of uncomfortable to do that, but there would be lint here, of course. Uh -huh. so it's, yeah. All right. But then, um, or, or your other knuckles, but... Um, just so that way you can get the nice clump of your lint, which you can then take off and toss in the rubbish bin, but without having any worries about your nails. Not bad. So yeah, happy nails. Yeah, so. Well, thank you for all that. Yeah, totally. It's so, nice to talk to you. I'm sorry that you had mostly bummer news, but uh, you seem to have a pretty good attitude about these things. Yeah, I mean, I'm still kind of looking for... A full-time job and and i have had you know some work over the past few months contract work here and there but that's kind of finished up mm -hmm. so 
We all like you a lot. Well, I like you too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I love you, lady. Ah, love you too, Jay. Yeah. Well. Bye.